So I get asked once in a while, because I spend a, a lot of time reading, why do I, I spend so much time on fiction books? I'm like, hey, you've got a PhD in physics. You should be off doing smart things. I'm like, okay. Um, only have 23 patents to my name. I guess I should do more. Um, but uh, yeah, so I get asked that a lot. Well, fiction, as, as somebody who's actually written a number of fiction books and, and read lots and lots of them, Fiction inspires. Good fiction really inspires. Great fiction makes you think and, and think about other things. And one of the things as a fiction writer I've tried to do and, and other people have is, is they look at reality as it is, especially in the sci-fi sense, and say, what's reality going to look like? Or, or take like Tom Clancy. He would say, okay, we've got the world as it is. What's going to be the next you know, it, military disaster that we have to go solve with the intelligence services? And one of the books that I read as a teenager that was one of the first series of books, second actually series of books, Dragon Lights being the first, that my father rifled through as fast as I did, was this series called Warbots, which I'm proud to say was out of print. I managed to rescue it and actually wrote the forward for the re-release. Uh, but this series of books, Warbots, it, it's about, it was written in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, there's 12 in the series. It's about a fictional military group that uses robots to fight wars instead of themselves. And at the time, it was like, this would never happen. The military is never going to take people off the battlefield and put robots there. Well, we kind of do that now, right? That's sort of major thing. We, drones, right? Uh, these robots were artificially intelligently controlled. Sound familiar? Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a 35-plus-year-old series. So it... it to me, when I read it as as a kid in high school, um, and eventually somebody who was in the army, uh, it it really did make me think. I'm like, is this really where we're going? Is this really what we're doing? And then when I got out of the army and pursued a degree in science, you know, discovered absolutely is where we're going, and I understand why now. And the other interesting thing is, if you look at technology now today at where we're at, and where we're going to be in five, ten, fifteen years. There's a number of people out there kind of explaining it properly. And those are people like Ray Kurzweil. There's a few others. Um, and uh, a few fiction writers really trying to tag into what's it, what might it look like. And more importantly, like, like this series of books, what implication does it have on the way we do day-to-day -day operations? Because this series pointed out something interesting. It, it said, hey, what happens if we've become so dominant on the battlefield and, and so incredibly efficient that, at military activity using robots that we no longer have to put people on the battlefield. What's that look like? And then what happens if a case comes up that we've kind of forgotten how to fight on the ground and all of a sudden we find a job the robots can't do and we got to send people back and you have to relearn those skills. It's an interesting twist. Um, so fiction writers today and, and people like myself look at it like, where are we going to be in 5, 10, 15 years? And interestingly, the, the people who are are deep into technology have a tendency to get ignored and be told, oh, you're, you're wrong in favor, especially today, in favor of some, you know, online person who said, well, I, I, I read three articles and the article said, well, yeah, OK, um, I've written a bunch of articles on this stuff. Right. I've actually worked on that. And Ray Kurzweil, I mean, he's he's out there saying some stuff that people really should listen to. And he's worked in AI for 60 years, right? So he's he's one of those guys that really should be listened to like everything he says. Um, but uh, uh, the other thing I think that's interesting is if you watch the fiction, well-written fiction, especially in the sci-fi or near future kind of action stuff, uh, you'll actually see things that, that really could potentially happen. And um, some of it's not that pretty, right? So um, this is one of the books that really inspired me, uh, one of the series that really inspired me to go off and, and pursue a degree in, in physics and ultimately get my PhD and work on military tech. Um, but uh, I, I think in today's market, uh, people do kind of want that realism unless you're reading, you know, unless you're talking about Marvel stuff. And then I think we're all kind of superheroed out. But if you're if you're a fiction writer, you tend to look at reality and craft something that's somewhat realistic uh, and maybe with a slight stretch. Uh, Stephen King is probably the one fiction writer who has stretched that slight stretch to the extreme and gotten away with it for 40 plus years. Uh, and I love his stuff, but you know, he has said some, he has done some crazy stuff that's just not believable. Uh, but we, we all love it. And Firestarter was great. And Cujo was actually Cujo could happen as could misery, but there's, there's some in there that just absolutely impossible, but others, you know, like Shawshank, yeah bought every part of that um 
but uh, anyway, so the point is this series, you know, caused me to think there's other series out there that have caused other people to think over the years. And uh, um, I think that's sort of the job of a fiction writer is to take reality and make a slight twist on it and to say, here's the direction it could go. And that's why one of the, the things I always like looking for are authors with actual backgrounds in what they write. So like the guy who wrote this series uh, was an actual scientist at, at National Labs, right? So he sort of left and, and uh, did this which I found kind of interesting. Uh, and it, it certainly put a very realistic twist on, on what he wrote. And if you read it now, it kind of looks like modern warfare, right? So uh, it, um, uh, yeah, that's the sort of stuff I like working on. Uh, but it's also the sort of stuff I like reading. It's like, where are we going to be at in 10, 15, 20 years? And that's why I am such an avid fiction reader. And if you've got, and, and this is one of the things I'd love to ask is if you are a sci-fi sci reader, action thriller reader, and you find a series that's like, Holy crap! That could really be us in five or ten years. I'd love to hear about it, um, and I'd love to to talk about it with whoever it is that that uncovers that one I haven't seen. Uh, so you know, drop me a line, drop me a direct message, click like, subscribe, follow, tell me I'm stupid. I don't care. Um, by the way, it's Al Bear on the shirt. Uh, so everybody have a great day, um, and I'll see you on the next video. So um, just remember, uh, there are occasionally little Easter eggs left in my my videos. This one I don't think there is one, but uh, watch for them in the future. They'll be popping up more and more musically, usually related to something musical. Everybody have a great weekend.